Senator, thanks for being on the program here. In the final days of the fourth special legislative session, the state Senate rushed through that bill, Brian Hughes's bill that, that might have helped with this situation, with these lawsuits here. You were the only senator to oppose it. Tell us why. Well, I don't think it would have helped, actually. And I think it may have uh, caused unintended consequences. I think the stated goal of the bill was to prevent what uh, appears to be frivolous lawsuits from um, uh, slowing down the implementation of wildly popular uh, constitutional propositions passed uh, um, in November. Uh, I think that was the goal, but I think that the bill, because it was it was quite rushed, actually would have uh, given a potentially frivolous lawsuit uh, an actual good legal claim of of uh, retroactivity and being singled out in in a way that's improper. Actually, possibly slowing down the implementation of wildly popular propositions um, getting implemented. So you think this might have dragged it out even more if this passed by both chambers? I do. These lawsuits that have been filed by these far-right activists, they could take months to get through the legal process. Does this mean, to your knowledge, that the property tax cuts will, will be delayed from being enacted and that retired teachers aren't immediately going to get an increase in their pension payments? I think it's possible that there will be delay and that will be extremely unfortunate after uh, more than a decade of of feeding a constituency, frankly, falsehoods about the integrity of elections. Uh, now it's it's um, uh, there are now potentially frivolous lawsuits about the integrity of a wildly popular proposition, a constitutional proposition election. Um, that's that's what happens when you tell folks um, uh, that there are things wrong with the elections process that aren't at all wrong with it. This does drip in political irony, doesn't it? It does drip in political irony, yes. Um, now, that said, you also don't want to make policy presuming that every uh, election challenge is totally frivolous. We don't want to create a law in the United States or in the state of Texas where no one could ever bring a challenge to an election when there is actually something wrong. Um, I don't think that's what these these uh, lawsuits are about, uh, but we certainly don't want to close the door so that someone in the future who has a legitimate claim can't bring it to the courts. You said that, that this could delay the implementation of these constitutional amendments that, that passed. When will you know? When will we know for sure? And what are you telling your constituents? Well, what happens in a case like this, if uh, if it's true that the the case doesn't have a lot of basis, if it's if these are not strong cases, then the Secretary of State will say that. And actually, my understanding is that Secretary of State did respond this week, saying that they are not strong cases, uh, and furthermore that they were uh, improperly served, and therefore they're they're not filed in the in the window that the law allows. In which case, um, these cases will be poured out, and that's exactly what should happen with a weak case. And then the next thing I guess we're waiting on is for the governor to certify the election, and that's when it would all take effect, I guess? Well, the governor's office already has certified the election. If ah. the, the judge uh, or the judges in these multiple cases, if they find that there is a colorable claim, they would abate, um, they would delay um, uh, putting the propositions into effect. They, they essentially would delay the certification going into effect. Um, but that's only if they find that these are good lawsuits. If, I, if, they I miss that. State, if, if they don't state a legal basis or the facts that they allege don't support a legal basis, they'll get poured out pretty quick. I, I missed that legal step. So so the secretary of state obviously doesn't make the legal decisions here. But did the secretary of state tell the governor that these don't have legal standing, essentially, and then, then the governor certified? Is that what happened? No, I believe that the secretary of state told the courts in told which the, courts. The, okay. the lawsuits have been filed that um, they don't have a colorable claim, they were not appropriately served, and they can't be, uh, the, the um, infirmity in service can't be corrected by refiling because the governor has already certified. So they've, they've, they're have they outside their window. Understand. How long is all this going to take to, to work its way through the courts? Any idea? Well, um, if it were a strong case, 
and it had and it took full advantage of its right of appeal. A strong case at its slowest would take more than a year, but a weak case um, could be disposed of by the courts rather quickly. And then this would take effect then, right? If the mm -hmm. courts throw these out. Mm -hmm. Last thing I wanted to ask about, you mentioned this a moment ago. What do these lawsuits say about misinformation and disinformation that's out there about our, our voting process, our electoral process? Well, in, in, in broad stroke, first of all, there's a number of cases, and I haven't read every single one of the cases yet. Uh, but in broad stroke, the claim is that the electronic voting machines weren't properly certified right. uh, and that the election rolls are connected to the Internet. Um, uh, my, I am hearing that the allegation that the electronic voting machines were not properly certified um, is, is not true, um, and therefore that claim would go away. And I am also hearing that, and, and no, uh, from my time as a county judge, that the fact of the election rolls being connected to the internet is not a problem. That's how we know when an, a uh, voter, uh, if a voter has accidentally voted twice mm. by having the voter rolls connected to the internet. Gotcha. Senator, thanks so much for the time and the insight. Sure. Thank you.